When we talk about the secrets of the universe, we must return to talking about the pharaohs, about the priests, who used knowledge in the service of the throne, and the person sitting on the throne, and who were keen on knowledge, and to keep it away from people and from foreigners as well. Let us ask, when did man know the electric lamp? Most of us know when the electric light bulb appeared, but there are other electric lamps that appeared and disappeared with those who discovered them. In the south of France, there are very deep caves that sunlight does not reach. This is normal. What cannot be used is any lamp of any kind, because these caves are very narrow places. These places are carefully engraved with very complex, constant colors. It has fine, adjacent, and intersecting lines, and the painter must use a lamp to illuminate it. And to place this lamp in a place, and to move it with his hands, and to move it, there is no place in these colorful places that can accommodate a lamp. And there is no lamp known in history at the time this cave was dug or engraved. This cave is more than 20,000 years old. It is impossible for a person to use an electric lamp, but for those who know the composition of these colors in which psychological minerals were used, it is not difficult for them to know the electric lamp. A large number of archaeologists and natural scientists confirm that the pharaohs also used electric lamps inside the Great Pyramid. It is not far fetched that the secret of the electric lamp or even the electric generator would be passed down through the ages from the priests of Egypt to the priests of Europe. In the days of King Louis IX, who was captured in Egypt, there lived a scientist. People were accusing him of witchcraft. But King Louis IX denied this accusation. He was declared one of the greatest scholars of the era. This man had a lamp, and this lamp was described by the king as lighting up automatically. You pressed on it, and it was as if the sun was rising. When he knew about this man, people began to circle around his house. They knock on his door to watch the dazzling light that radiates from one of the rooms of the house throughout the day and night. As for the great French scientist Pierre Laplace, he repeats this meaning in his books and in his studies, saying, It is certain that the Egyptian priests who taught the Greek philosophers a lot of wisdom, knowledge, and cosmic secrets, they were the ones who taught the Greek philosophers, Thales, Pythagoras, and Plato. But the pharaohs forbade their knowledge to other Egyptians and foreigners. As for Champollion, who deciphered the Rosetta Stone, he said that he found in the tomb of Ramses IX, who lived fifteen centuries before Christ, what confirms that the pharaohs knew that the day was twenty-four hours, and that they divided the day into other precise parts, and that they were the most successful people in the world in using water and water vapor. When the prophet Moses lived in the court of King Rameses II, he must have learned scientific secrets from the priests. It is enough to read some books of the Torah to know what strange things Moses did that could only have one source, the priests of Egypt. For example, in the book of Numbers, we find that the earth split under those who rebelled against Moses and that it destroyed them and burned their homes. It is historically certain that China used gunpowder and cannons in the year 85 AD in its wars against the Tatars, but the pharaohs knew that thousands of years ago but something is more amazing than gunpowder. The Defender comes to us from ancient Indian books. She told us about the missiles that were falling from the sky. If these missiles approached the ground, an earthquake and hell would occur, and that flying ships were thrown at the enemy forces. We return to the ancient Brahminical books. You read this phrase. The first beings to land on this earth from the planet Venus were in the year 18061841 before the birth of Christ. They came to earth in ships that had the color and lightness of clouds, and that the emperor Tam was one of the kings. In the tenth dynasty of China, he and members of his entourage boarded one of these ships and moved in the blink of an eye from the beginning of the country to the end. They could not believe their eyes. One of the Indian legends says, The king and his family rode a white cloud pulled by dozens of white geese, and these clouds appear to the eye, as if they were a pearl in the sky. As for these ships, air precedes them and fire comes after them. Gottschalk also says that there are strange inscriptions indicating that the Roman emperor Nero used an elevator in his palace, and there was a secret room in Nero's palace. Anyone who approached it would be killed. This room was the one that contained the secret of the elevator, which no one knew how it moved. As for Pope Sylvester II, 
he admitted that he took wisdom from the Arab scholars who came to him from Seville and Cordoba. In the year 970, Pope Sylvester invented a steam engine. He invented the first pendulum and invented a sundial and a clock that depicts the movement of the planets around the sun. He was the first to declare with certainty that the earth is spherical, and there are many rare manuscripts in the Vatican Library. He was also the first to scientifically describe the meaning of a lightning conductor and why it is made of metal. Why is it placed on the top of buildings, and why is it pointed? As for the scientist and philosopher Roger Bacon, he read knowledge, wisdom, and magic in Arabic manuscripts. He was the first to say that there are other forces that we do not know, and other beings must have come to earth and helped, and then returned or disappeared under mysterious circumstances that we do not know. The philosopher Roger Bacon declared, There are secrets that are difficult for ordinary people to understand. It must not be in their hands, so that they do not burn themselves and the world with them. As a result of this wisdom, his books were burned, and thousands of scientific and philosophical manuscripts were burned, along with the designs of strange and wondrous machines and devices. Moments before he died, he said, People should go to caves, for there are secrets in them. The great past of all humanity, a brilliant past of which we know only a little. In a book recently issued by the American Smithsonian Institute, it was stated that man has used iron and extremely pure steel for more than 10,000 years, and that he placed it in ovens with a temperature of more than 9,000 degrees Celsius. In a careful study by the Soviet scientist Mattist M. Agrest, he says that the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which were mentioned in the Bible, had an atomic bomb dropped on them, and that everything that was mentioned in the ancient books about the form of destruction fire, radiation, and turning people into salt simply by looking at the radiation confirms that the explosion was nuclear. If people in the days of Emperor Charlemagne were mad at seeing strange beings flying in the sky, to the point where they began to flounder among each other because they were not looking at the ground or at each other, then the madness of the modern era has tended to search for other beings that lived here, and it disappeared, or it came from above and returned and did not leave any trace behind it, but rather came the human generations that resumed primitive life and recorded what they saw and heard in inscriptions on stone or on the walls. The dazzling ancient civilizations, or the higher beings that were more mature and developed, were keen to remain a mystery, and for man to shake his head and think. These beings must have quickly become convinced that the inhabitants of this earth are lazy, and that their development is slow. And if these higher beings have left us inscriptions on the rocks telling us, Beware of fire, or saying what the Persian prophet Zoroaster said, Light becomes fire in every ignorant hand.